Thank you for staying with us on Holy Land Uncovered. And now to our weekly tour. Mount Tabor is located nine kilometers east of Nazareth. For most Christians, it is a holy mountain recognized as the place of Jesus' transfiguration. It is also important to Jews. That's due to the strategic role it plays in the story of Deborah and Barak and their battle against Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army. This battle became a landmark not just in the history of the Israelites, but for women around the world. Let's take the tour. The Bible doesn't deal with many prominent women in leadership positions. However, in the book of Judges, we meet one of the most influential women of all, Deborah. The only female judge and the only judge to be called a prophet or prophetess. Here on Mount Tabor in northern Israel, the story of Deborah peaked when she led the battle against Sisera, the chief commander of the kingdom of Hazor. Deborah ordered her chief commander, Barak, to launch a war against Sisera. Barak hesitated at first, but Deborah insisted. Joe, one of the greatest battles of the Israelites against the Canaanite armies took place over here. How exactly did it unfold? What do we know? We know that uh, after 20 years of uh, subjugation by King Yavin of Hatzor, one of the Canaanite tribes, and his general Sisera, that the Israelites uh, tried to uh, fight back. Um, Deborah asked Barak to go to battle against the Canaanites, and Barak uh, said, basically, only if you lead us. Um, Deborah said, I will, but it'll mean that this battle will be won instead of by you, but by two women. And uh, the conception of the battle by Deborah and the sealing of the fate of Sisera and, uh, and the Canaanites by, um, by Jael. And if we're talking about the strategy of this battle, it's also fascinating because on one side we see one army with iron chariots and the other army, well, they only had God. God and, uh, and a lady who understood the, the elements. In this case, Deborah looks down at the valley, feels the drops of rain like we're feeling on us now, and says, uh, if we just let the chariots it rain enough and the chariots get stuck in the mud, we'll win the battle. And at the, time, at the right time, she sent Barak off uh, to fight with his 10,000 soldiers. Uh, the result after this is that Sisera escapes, uh, fleeing uh, north to Hatzor, and uh, he meets Jael, who um, uh, gives him milk to drink when he asks for water, and, uh, and as he lies down to rest, she, um, she kills him with a tent peg to his forehead. Mount Tabor is significant for Christians as well. It is one of the sites believed to be the mountain where Jesus underwent his transfiguration. According to the New Testament, Jesus and three of his apostles, Peter, James, and John, went to a mountain to pray. On the mountain, Jesus begins to shine with bright rays of light. Then the prophets Moses and Elijah appeared next to him, and he spoke to them. Jesus was then called Son by a voice in the sky. Joe, what does the voice in the sky tell Jesus? The voice says in a, in a big voice, a loud voice, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And this in fact is the second time Jesus hears that voice. The first was at his uh, baptism on the uh, Jordan River with John. In that case, a white dove flew up from the baptism. Why Moses and Elijah? Why are they the figures that he meets? Moses and Elijah are the, are the prophets from, uh, the great prophets from the, the Bible. Uh, Moses representing the law, the law that he brought down from Mount Sinai. And Elijah um, always played the part of the morality, the man who came to the kings and said, you can't behave this way, and came to the people and said, remember God, forget, forget the gods of, uh, of Baal. Mount Tabor became a major site for pilgrims. On its peak, we can see the remains of a fortress from the Crusader era. Two important churches were built on top of the remains, the Church of the Transfiguration and the Eastern Orthodox Sanctuary. Tell us a bit about this church here behind us. It seems a bit modern. The church is modern. It was built in the last century by, uh, designed by Antonio Baulucci, the Franciscan Catholic uh, architect. And here he tried to feature um, tabernacles that were built or suggested to be built built by John for each one of the, the three, Elijah, Moses, and, um, uh, and Jesus. And he made the, the one on the right for Elijah, the one on the left for Moses, and the, the big one encompassing both for, for Jesus, representing the, uh, um, the new law. 
The end of the battle between Deborah and Sisera brings us one of the most known texts of the Old Testament, the Song of Deborah. The prophetess praised the victory of two substantial women, herself and Yael the warrior. Shelby, we're standing here on top of Mount Tabor watching over the village of Daburia, also named after Deborah. Her song was indeed inspiring, but what was the essence of it? The song of Deborah was written to celebrate the victory over the Canaanites. And many scholars believe it's actually one of the oldest texts written in the Bible. Many believe it was written in either the 11th or 12th century, making it written hundreds of years before the rest of the Book of Judges where it's found. Now, the song itself is supposedly written by Deborah, describing the battle efforts. We find passages that say, wake up, wake up, Deborah, wake up and sing out in song. And that's showing how her job as a leader in the community would have been to sing war chants, inspiring people to go into the village. We also see passages saying things like, highways were abandoned, travelers took to winding paths, and villagers in Israel would not fight until I, Deborah arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. From Queen Esther to Mary Magdalene, women were mentioned in the holy books as key figures who stood up and made a difference. Among them, Deborah is one of the first and most influential women of all.